Hello everyone, I'm uh, Hugo Swart, uh, lead of XR, you know, VR AR here at Qualcomm together with our bigger uh, metaverse uh, uh, initiative. So today we have uh, one more great episode of uh, exploring the metaverse and um, I have uh, here with me uh, Steve Lucas, uh, he's on the team, you know, one of the uh, people that really started um, Snapdragon Spaces together with Brian, who hopefully you saw our previous episodes. So Steve, uh, welcome uh, to this episode. Why don't you introduce yourself? Yeah, th thanks for having me so much. Uh, so I'm Steve, I lead the developer experience team for Snapdragon Spaces, and that covers developer support, evangelism, documentation, up to including everything to help make sure that the developer journey is world-class, uh, sometimes even uh, helping evolve the product itself. Okay, uh, Steve, just so everyone is reminded, what is Snapdragon Spaces? Uh, Snapdragon Spaces is our XR developer platform that exposes our perception features up to the developer for being able to target all kinds of XR devices. I know you have a lot of experience uh, in XR, you know, previously at uh, Magic Leap where you tried a few things, but maybe tell us about Snapdragon Spaces today or what happened. You know, the interaction you had with the developers so far. A lot of fun with them? Oh my gosh, it's, uh, it's, it's the best part of my job. Right? It's working with developers, getting their feedback and really uh, enabling developers to do things that they've never been able to do before. That, that's, right. that, that's, what, that's what brought me back here and it's been, it's been an amazing ride. So give us a few examples of developers already using Snapdragon Spaces. What's the feedback? What's, uh, what's, what are they doing with it? Uh, well, we went around the world. Right? We, yeah. went, we, went, we went to uh, uh, Hubram over in Germany, and then we went to T-Mobile in Seattle. We, we did Ultra Hack uh, in Finland, and then MIT Hack most recently. Um, and, and across those, then what we're seeing is is a lot of variety in what the developers are building. We've mm -hmm. seen things in the presence with Trace 3D, with Beam. Uh, we've seen games from OX Games, DB Creations. Uh, we've seen uh, enterprise visualization with Mixed World. And we're seeing uh, just, just so many uh, different, e exciting things. So um, as we start to get a little deeper into what we're doing and what's ahead, um, what are the type of developers, you know, what kind of companies are building for XR today? That's a great question. Um, as, as we started Snapdragon Spaces, you know, we, we went through a gradual rollout process where, where we started with AR, as, uh, with, with AR head-worn glasses uh, connected with a companion phone controller. Right. And, and when we started that way, then we're, we, we really wanted to ease folks in and say, you know, AR developers, you already have an AR app, try to bring it over. If, you have, right. if you're doing VR, bring that over to start experimenting with knocking out the background and working inside the real world. Yeah. You know, and then we layered in our perception technologies and we, we started opening up to VR and MR to start blurring those lines. Right. Uh, so what we really want to do though is start tapping into mobile more. Okay, that's where I want to go deeper. Yes. So um, how do we expand the reach. You know, you talk about, you know, VR developers, AR developers, you know, these are still limited compared with the broad range of developers we have in PCs, in, 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 in mobile. What needs to happen to bring that type of developer into XR? Well, mobile, mobile is the heart of what we do. That's right. And, and mobile is always this, this big ground where everyone knows how to use a mobile device. Mm -hmm. So we've seen some, toe dipping with, with, with uh, mobile AR, yeah. right? being able to take your smartphone and hold it up. And really where we see the m true like special magic is having it in the glasses. Right. So again, with Snapdragon Spaces, we started with uh, the glasses being first and yeah. the mobile controller, a companion controller. Right. But what we're really doing with the evolution of Spaces is bring in the idea of being able to do mobile plus XR and really take these technologies together and be able to take an existing user base of mobile developers, which are in the millions, and be able to allow them easy access to head-worn XR. Okay, how is that easier? So, it's a great question. And uh, for what's really fun is that the average per, uh, per user probably considers that this is just something, a natural 
uh, evolution and natural thing that we could, should be able to do, what I'm describing right. here. Yeah. Uh, and so it's, it's taking a mobile app that already exists today. Mm -hmm. So a game or something game, on the phone? Map. Right, right. Yeah. And being able to plug in glasses mm -hmm. and then do more and expand that application mm -hmm. out into the, the infinite world around you. So is it something like uh, bringing special effect animations around the phone? around the main experience, is that an example? That's a great example, because mm -hmm. what, what I like about that example is that for a, a developer who's going from a single screen to multi-screen, and we've seen that before with yeah. some of the old handheld gaming devices. That's right. right. Then it's really a very, very easy progression for them because they yeah. can understand, if I just want to start small, yeah. you know, I don't want to go into full perception yet, yeah. but just fit, start to acclimate into XR, then yeah. First, let's just enhance what we have, yeah. and you know, add and move maybe some of the sub menu items like a, like a game map. Move that into the XR and keep everything into the. Yeah, I really love that that idea because if you want to do a full on AR or VR experience, is a big commitment. It's a big you know investment that a developer can make, and then this idea um, of uh, just supplementing or starting what you have, which is your mobile app, yes. and then putting things around it. It's a low barrier, I would think, for these developers to start experimenting with the AR glasses. Right, exactly. It, you, it, the, some of these things we've seen are taking a mobile project, mm -hmm. adding in Snapdragon spaces, yeah. throwing in another camera with no code, right. and instantly turning that into an AR app. Now, that isn't necessarily the be-all, end-all, months-long project, but yeah. at, it gets the person using it, either the developer or the consumer, to start playing and saying, wait, now that I see this ability to step into this world, right. what else do I want to do? Now do I want to shrink it down and put it on a, pla on a table using plane detection? Right. Or now do I want to use hand tracking and start interacting with these objects? Yeah. But then it opens the mind in a way that we've never been able to see before that easily. I mean, this is a great idea, Steve. You know, just the using the phone and the glass um, at the same time from a user experience how did that idea come? Was it, you know, you on a hallway on a, you know, bright day said, oh, this is what we need to do? Oh, I remember the exact moment but uh. of, of the big aha moment. Mm -hmm. uh, so first, the way, what led to it was we got our first prototypes of Snapdragon Spaces ru um, running on the glasses and phone form factor where the phone is a companion. And, mm. and it had like a button and a touchpad. I thought, okay, this is great. And at the time we said, well, as a developer, with our experience and knowing what, what developers like to do, wouldn't they like to use the full phone screen as an input, right? Using the full touch screen, multi-touch, being able to uh, open up different menus and just sliders and all these controls. And so we started building on that to be able to enhance the glasses experience. And, and remember, clear as day, we were in a meeting talking about how do we grow the, start off this ecosystem from right. nothing? What do we build? Yeah. Who, who do we go to? And we started talking about mobile developers that are already new mobile AR. And I was sitting there looking and saying, well, wait, if they take this mobile AR and move the AR part of it into the glasses, but keep all of their same user input, then, then if they don't have mobile AR and just mobile, they could do the same thing. We could actually go after not just thousands of XR developers, but millions of Android developers around the world, this could really be the on-ramp to bring in everyone and moving the entire e mobile ecosystem into XR. Now that's, that's great, Steve. It's amazing how you know, the realization of um, you know, a problem that you had as a developer you know, and uh, making that idea now come to uh, fruition, come to life, enabling developers today, that's really amazing. Thank you. Yeah, it's been about uh, just about two years since uh, since that idea came to life, and uh, we spent all this time working with partners and working internally to unlock this, this ability to do this. Now, then, how do you put Fusion together with the Snapdragon Spaces? Is that a, a mode of Snapdragon Spaces? Is that how would you kind of uh, put these two things together? It's like a mode. I like to I like to call it a form factor. Yeah. It, it's really something new where we're we're seeing this full usage of the phone and a full usage of the glasses. Yeah. Now, as you recall, uh, then the original form factor of Snapdragon Spaces was is phone and glasses already right. the hardware hardware wise. Yeah. And 
uh, over time, then we unveiled that we are adding VR and, and mixed reality support. Yeah. So these are, it's a different form factor. And so this is a new form factor mm -hmm. that we, we really haven't seen before quite like this. Yeah. Yeah, so we've seen the hardware connections before, but just the way the software operates, it's all using, uh, if I can get a little bit technical, it's using, yeah. it's using a single scene graph. Mm. So all the information, a scene graph is how it knows all the information of what to render in a 3D world. Mm. And now uh, that same scene graph is being used to draw to multiple screens, both the glasses and the, uh, and the mobile phone. Mm. As opposed to having an independent um, application running on the glasses, separate from the phone that have to talk to each other through a network bridge or other yeah. communication layer, it's all being driven off a single uh, activity yeah. in Android. Yeah, you know, um, in previous episodes, we talk about split compute, mm -hmm. right, between Absolutely. glass and phone, which is, hey, you can't do everything as far as rendering and perception workloads all in the glass. You want to split compute. But now here we're talking about the user experience itself, yes. the application itself kind of having this merge between what you carry in your hand and um, what you have in, in your head. Is that a, a good way to look at it? A absolutely. And, and this is absolutely critical as a bridge yeah. between our mobile today and our fully head-worn tomorrow. How do we ferry people to the future? How do we bring them along? And that's where simplicity comes into play. Okay. How do we meet people where they are? So they're not scared, right? Because it's, it, it can be uh, a bit... Um, but new to a lot yeah. of people. And so, uh, and some people adapt well to new, right? They love the things that are new, but there's a lot of people who really want to stay familiar. And, and so what we're doing is we're providing that comfort of, I know how to use this phone, but now let me slowly introduce you to all these new concepts to prepare you and widen the funnel so that now more of us can enjoy the headborn future. Very cool. Now, I'm a mobile developer. I have a Unity app. I want to start experimenting with XR, the new cool thing. What do I do? Do I call Steve or there's <laughs> a, or something, you know, more? Spaces.qualcom.com. Okay. That, that, that's our website first. And after uh -huh. having Spaces, uh -huh. where developers should go, get all the information, download a dev kit. Why today? Mm -hmm. Why with Fusion? Mm -hmm. uh, with, what we love about Fusion is it's so easy to just start developing. Yeah. Because if you want to do A, B testing or A, B, C, D, E, F, F testing, that's as simple as tapping different buttons on your touch screen and seeing all the results but, in real time. you know, time. let's talk about the developer. Yeah. Well, you know, be technical. Yeah. Uh, what does developer need to do, right? Again, I have an app. I want to put, you know, this fuse, you know, AR into right. the app. What's, uh, what do I do? Oh, it's as simple as downloading the Snapdragon SDK. Okay. Uh, Snapdragon Spaces, Snapdragon yeah. Spaces SDK yeah. um, for Unity, yeah. and uh, opening your Unity project, importing yeah. that package, yeah. um, and what you would do then is add an AR camera to the mm. scene, mm. and to get started, that's really all you have to do. And then it's be creative as much as right. you want, uh, as much immersiveness as you want, exactly. if you just want to put a little you know, explosion that comes on top. If you do want to put a whole map around the phone. If you want to live inside that world, walk yeah. through it. And, and these things don't even have to be one-to-one. Mm. Uh, -one. And uh, what, these can be asynchronous experiences. Mm -hmm. So what have developers said? We already have some developers that are very interested in saying, I want to have the mobile phone that I'm holding while my partner it has the glasses on doing something else, but we're interacting with each other using this, this mobile format. So form that's my next question. I mean, we talked about um, um, this at AWE. Yes. What's the first reaction you got from people? A lot of surprise, a lot mm -hmm. of delight. Uh -huh. And uh, we've even heard even yesterday talking, talking to another developer about mm -hmm. it. They're saying, uh, this is what we've been waiting for. That's and very it, cool. Okay. All right, Steve. Thanks. Uh, thanks for the time. Thanks for explaining a little bit more about Snapdragon Spaces, uh, how we are enabling this new form factor, this new mode, right, for developers. You know, fusion, kind of really fusing what you the application is doing on the phone, and then experiencing as well on the glass. So I'm very happy to hear all this positive feedback from AWE from developers. And, uh, you know, let's uh, continue on the journey. Thanks uh, for being here. 
um, and uh, let's come up, uh, you know, with a, with a strong momentum, um, uh, you know, as we carry this forward. Okay. Thank you, Hugo. Thanks, Steve. Thanks for watching the Exploring the Metaverse show. If you want to watch another video or learn more about XR, click here. If you want to learn more about Snapdragon Spaces, click here.